I'm still running VideoPad 6.1. I wasn't going to make any more videos on using VideoPad until I updated, which I still haven't done. I'm still debating on. Anyway, I was looking for information on sequences because I couldn't figure something out with sequences. I've been using sequences mainly as a, uh, well, I, I dump a bunch of stuff that are related. Maybe I got three videos in one dump. And I'll dump them all into the hopper here, and uh, I'll make three different videos out of three different sequences. Now, that's one way I use it. But it's mostly for, uh, mostly just for basic, well, there's all kinds of ways you can use it, frankly. So, say I wanted to put these two videos together, uh, sequence one and sequence two. I showed in an earlier video how you can copy, cut, and paste between uh, sequences. You merely highlight one, hold control, and then you can go highlight the other pieces. Oops, sometimes you gotta expand things to get the little pieces. But anyway, now that I've got those all hooked together, I can actually drag them all as a unit too. This is something else, even within a sequence, I can change the order of all three of those all at once. Boop! Pop it right in there. But I could have also done that for sequences. I could have, uh, tagged a couple pieces control here and um, I could cut them out that could go to a different sequence and I can paste them so that's the thing I showed in an earlier video how you can cut paste back and forth between the sequences But that's not really the way sequences are intended to be used. So let's say I, this was let's say sequence one was my main video, and I'm working on sequence two that I want to add to that sequence, and I don't want to have to tag all the different pieces. It wouldn't be too bad in this one, but sometimes you got all kinds of little slices and it's hundreds of pieces. So in that case, sequence one, um, I change this over to sequences. And now I can just grab sequence two and just stick it in there. Boom. Done. In fact, I could grab sequence three and stick it back there too. Boom. Done. Now you'll notice there's no audio tracks on these. There's no divisions for all the different cuts. They've kind of been pre-assembled already. Almost like a finished video. That doesn't mean you can't change these. You shouldn't change them here. You can, you know, I could cut out something here. But don't do that. You'll really confuse things if you do that. Instead of doing it that way, go back to the sequence. So here's sequence two. Oh, wait a minute. I gotta go this way. And um, now I can make changes to the sequence. And cut out what I wanted to cut out. And I'm just doing random uh, editing here, making a mess out of these videos. But then, you know, I can cut these out if I want. I can also put in uh, images. And um, let me, I should have moved the cursor somewhere more sensible. And bingo, and I could change the text here. And I'm not even going to bother changing it too much. There we go. And then um, when I go back to the first sequence again, it's got everything put together. That will show in there. So I can modify, I can cut, paste. You just have to go back to the original sequence to do it. And uh, avoid the, avoid trying to cut things out of these. So it's kind of a signal to you when you don't see the audio and you don't see the little divisions that you've made from edits. It's all one piece. Then that should gel in your brain, oh, that's a sequence. And rather than editing the sequence on your final line here, go back to the sequence and edit it there. 
that's all I really wanted to show. So of course this is a great way to, uh, if you're making a longer video, it makes sense to make, piece, make it in pieces, make it in sequences, and then you can assemble all the pieces together. It can make editing a lot less of a headache.